In this video, I want to take a look at something kind of rather simple, um, which is using a multi instrument versus using two separate instrument tracks and using duplicate shared events. Okay, so let's dive in. So I've got a performance here that I recorded and we'll start off with the sub bass, basically just a really, really simple performance that I've laid down. I have another sound over here, which is again, my tie, but it's playing a much different sound. So if we listen to this, When I typically get songs to mix, especially if they come in Studio One, and in some cases, I will get either instruments that are transformed to audio, so they still have the MIDI, or in some cases, if it's a stock instrument, and maybe somebody says, hey, I'm not sure, you, maybe you might have to tweak some of my bass settings to get the attack right, or if it sounds a little bit clicky, maybe open up the attack. Sometimes people leave things as software instruments, and that's usually something that we work out ahead of time. If I have the same virtual instruments as them, I might say to them, sure, keep the session size down. If you m want me to tweak it a little bit, give me the flexibility. So sometimes that happens. I really like using um, separate tracks for one specific reason, especially if it's something that I get with Studio One in terms of the actual session. Let me reorder these for a moment. Let's say that I just got this Mai Tai sound over here, which is just kind of like... I can hear that there's a little bit of low end in there, but what I really want to do to fill it out is I want to add sub. Now, when I, I guess a while back, maybe a decade ago, my first instinct would be to basically just open up an EQ and then just boost the hell out of this low end. Whoops, let me take this low cut off. Find the frequency and just boost this. And then maybe I'll change it from a shelf to peaking. And that's okay. It works in context of the whole song. But something that I find myself doing a lot more these days, especially if I have access to the MIDI, is that I will just might just end up low cutting the sound that has the high end that I need to cut through for the smaller speakers. And then I would basically just take that and I would create a duplicate event that's shared, especially if I have the MIDI. And the way that we do this, I covered this in another video, is holding down the Alter Option modifier key, click holding and dragging. If we let go of the Alter Option modifier key while I'm still depressing my mouse button and I add the Command modifier on a Mac, and I assume that's Control on a PC, I'm about 99% sure that should work. Now we have Shared Copy. So what ends up happening here is we have our small speaker bass, which can still act as the fundamental, and it'll still sound like bass technically. Sometimes I'll mess with the octaves of these a little bit, but then I have a sub bass that I can layer over top. And that's gonna fill in the bottom end, especially on headphones or bigger speakers. Now the benefit of using a duplicate shared uh, instrument part is that any changes that I make to the instrument, those are gonna follow suit across the track. So that's one reason why I like using um, individual tracks and then using that little, it's not really a hack, but it's not an obvious um, shortcut I find. Sometimes you hold down one or two modifiers and you do something and it, it's going to produce a result and you say, oh, hey, that's cool. I'll remember that for next time. But this one's a little bit different because, you know, it's not immediately evident that if you click, hold, and drag, let go of the one modifier and add another, that it creates a shared copy. Now, this is kind of like how I approach things when I'm mixing. If somebody sends me something and I have access to the MIDI, then this is what I like doing. Uh, and then, of course, we have another option, which is a great option. It was added in version 3, and that is quite simply that we can use a multi-instrument. So here I have the exact same two um, instruments loaded, exact same two presets. I have a sub-bass sine wave clean preset in my tie, and then the second instance is just this bass frying fat, which is just something I pulled up and adjusted the gain. And of course, if you're using a multi-instrument in Studio One, you get the added benefit where you can blend these two instruments. Now, sometimes I wish that I had the ability to see some more parameters um, in terms of having them separated. And another thing to take note of when you're using a multi-instrument is that 
in the actual uh, console, we have this, it acts as if though it's in a folder. So, so we can show the sub channels and of course we can show the inserts and sends of everything if any of these did have any inserts and sends. Uh, and we have the ability to adjust everything in terms of their panning individually, but they automatically go to a kind of like a, a bus channel, if you will, that acts as the master. So any instrument part that you have on this track is going to trigger the sounds for the two. Now, this is something that's been covered over and over and over again. So I don't really feel like I need to repeat too much more of that with multi-instruments. But what I will say is that in some cases, um, I might actually prefer to work with um, two instruments, two instrument tracks, and then just going with my duplicate um, shared in terms of my instrument copy, a shared copy, because then if I make any changes, I can adjust them. I don't know what it is. Um, I like being able to just click and open up the instrument GUI, or if I'm using my key commands, Shift F11, that'll open up this instrument part. Now, if I do that on this one, of course it opens up the multi, but it's another click for me to open up the instrument. Also, I like seeing the way that the instrument rack looks when I can toggle between the instruments, because a lot of the times I might actually rename my instrument rack if this would be like a like a sawtooth or something, I might actually rename that in my instrument rack so that the instrument rack makes a little bit more sense. And also I can end up seeing it if I have my, where are they here? If I have my instruments open, I see the actual name of this. So two different approaches to being able to do the same thing. And like I said, the main reason I like using two tracks and duplicate shared events or instrument parts is if I have the MIDI, and sometimes if somebody sent me something from another DAW where I have a WAV file, um, if I feel that I wanna layer in a, a sine wave, a very, very basic sine wave to get the low end to sit better, I might say to that person, hey, do you have the MIDI file? Could you export the MIDI file in the exact same range that you exported me the audio? So say from bar one all the way to the end, and then I'll plug in the MIDI and I'll pull up a very basic sine wave, but if I do have access to the software instrument, or a lot of the times when I'm actually producing myself, I don't know what it is, maybe because I'm so married to a one-to-one -one ratio between tracks and channels, like I want to see a channel in my mixer and a track in the arrange window, but sometimes I find it's just easier to work with a duplicate shared copies of, of instrument parts and events, and then have the full control and everything sits on its own fader. What I will say though, is with respect to exporting stems, that there is something nice in um, the instrument parts where of course we could, we could export any configuration. We could export the bus channel of the multi-instrument, so the two of them rendered down together as one file, or we could export these individually if you wanted to give a further level of control to somebody who's mixing your project down the line. Anyways, just wanted to do that video, multi-instruments versus using separate tracks and separate instruments and using the duplicate shared events. Two different options you have. They both give you a similar result. Some of them come in handy in certain areas and, um, you know, there are a couple different ways to get the same job done. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.